guys from Visual Concepts, Eric Benish, producer, and Mike Wang, senior game designer. Um, real quick before we jump into all the great questions that you provided, I just wanted to give a quick overview. NBA 2K13 will be available on October 2nd for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PSP, PC, Wii, and Wii U version will be coming out this holiday season. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the questions. Uh, we've got a couple general to kick off, and then we're going to get into some more game specifics. Uh, question number one, is this a brand new engine? Uh, I'll take that one. This is Eric Heiss. Uh First off, thank you everyone for taking the time to come and listen to us uh, talk about NBA 2K13. Really appreciate it. Uh, getting to the question, uh, engines are very, uh, it's, it's a term that's commonly used in the industry with little understanding of what, what it truly means. Um, you know, you have, you have physics engines, you have graphics engines. So to say, to ask a broad question, is there a new engine? Uh, we, it's getting to the end of the product. We all know that not in creating an, an overarching new engine for the product you know, as we get to the end of the current life cycles. Um, that being said, we do have a number of new systems within the game. I'm sure Mike will talk more about those on the, the gameplay side, animation side. Um, but as far as an overarching engine, no, there's nothing in regards to that area new, but we did you know, iterate on a lot of things, making the game feel very, very new and very fresh. Great. Next question. Uh, this might be hard to answer. What one thing has the dev team most excited this year? Why should fans be excited too? Uh, I'll take that one again. I think um, this year represents the single biggest uh, annual upgrade that we've ever had as far as uh, new features and just incremental you know, improvements in all of the modes we offer in the game. Uh, a lot of years we tend to add you know, the Jordan Challenge or NBA's Greatest, and a couple modes will get you know, kind of cast off with, you know, just not having time to do it. Obviously, putting out a game every 12 months makes it very difficult uh, to touch on everything. Uh, but this year, you know, more than any other in the past, and I've been doing this for over 10 years now here, uh, is that you know, we really did hit on everything this year. We have the My Team mode, which hasn't gotten a lot of discussion publicly yet, uh, but I think is probably the strongest feature in the game this year. It's a lot of fun uh, for basketball players players they've never seen anything like it and I think it brings a lot to table. So for me personally, I think my team is going to be a bit of a surprise this year for the fans. With the popularity and success of NBA 2K11 and 2K12, how difficult has it been to continue to live up to the expectations of fans for a fresh experience each time? I'll take that one. Hi uh, guys, this is Mike. Um, you know, I think that's a, it's a good question. I think that the fan base, in some regard, we, we may never be able to live up to their expectations because um, they want, you know, the world, and, and, and rightly so. Um, but, you know, I think that one of the things about, about this team is that we are a very, very passionate team, and a team that um, we like to pride ourselves on the fact that we have the best sim on the market and that we never want to rest. We never want to kind of settle for okay. So we're striving to make the best game every year, and I think that the fans' expectations and, and all the feedback that we get from year to year is what drives us to make the best game possible. So. We want to thank the fans, and um, we hope that they're going to really enjoy 13 as well. Great. And moving into some questions that we got regarding Jay-Z and the soundtrack, this question is, well, now earlier this summer, Sean Jay-Z Carter was serving as executive producer of NBA 2K13. What influences has Sean brought to the development of the game? So when we first started working with Jay-Z, I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure what to expect, and I'm sure a lot of you felt that way when we first announced that he was, you know, EPing the game this year. Um, after meeting with Jay and his team, we quickly learned that he he doesn't he had absolutely no interest in just putting his name on the box. He if he was going to be there in that space, he wanted to be heavily involved in the development of the game. Um, which again, I wasn't totally sure how to take, you know, right off the bat. But after we met with him, it was very clear that he was a huge fan of the game. He's obviously a very savvy businessman, um, and he has, in, in my opinion, he has his finger on the pulse of you know, what, what consumers want in, in many different markets. So to align ourselves with him uh, was clearly a very strong thing for us to do. And just the input he gave into the game was huge as far as, you know, obviously he hand-selected the soundtrack, which is phenomenal this year. Uh, he gave us a ton of input on presentation, uh, just game modes, and, and just feedback from him and his team that was very valuable to us. And there's a lot of stuff that I think is in the game that you really haven't heard a lot about yet, specifically on the presentation side. Uh, we have, you know, music videos of 
um, all of the songs in the soundtrack, and they're cut up with in-game audio, kind of like our teaser system that we have. Uh, very artistic, very artistic things, uh, things that don't you don't really see in a traditional sports game, and I think that really goes to show just the culture that our game, you know, presents this year. And I think a lot of sports games really miss out on that, but I do think we hit the nail on the head with that this year. So, given the fact that Jay Z is executive producer, does that mean that the Nets will get a bit of a ratings boost? <laughs> um, no, no, no. Jay, Jay's very real, and uh, I think we're even more real in, in terms of how serious we take making the video game. So there were no friendly boosts to uh, to the Nets or any other team for that matter. So they they had a great summer. So they're obviously a considerably better than they were last year, uh, but uh, everything is fair. Right on. Uh, now moving into some questions about uh, Team USA and Legends in NBA 2K13. How exactly is the game structured with the Legends this year? So all of the Legends teams that we had in the game last year return this year. Um, as I know we put out there, we did add a few teams. We added the 2000-2001 76ers, which is Allen Iverson in his prime. A very, very fun team to play with and, and obviously a hugely requested uh, player that we didn't have in the game last year. Um, alongside him, I think we have 10 of his 11 teammates. We only missed out on one bench player who just didn't want to play with us. It happens from time to time. Um, and obviously beyond that, we have the classic dream team in the game, the first time in 20 years that they've all been together in a game on that team. Uh, we have the 2012 USA Olympic team that won the gold medal in London. Uh, so as far as legends go, they're all available off the bat. You don't have to do any crazy unlocking or codes or anything. Uh, you can just buy the game on day one, go right to Team Select, and pick any teams you want. So it's very much available for our fans. Can you tell us more about what went into the inclusion of the Dream Team in this year's game? Uh, the inclusion, I, I think our fans got to see almost a little insight into the game development as the roster for that thing pretty much unfolded right before their very eyes. Um, I know we put out the, the initial screenshot and the lineup, and, and Pippen was missing. And so people kind of got to see firsthand what the power of social media can do in, in getting Pippen to kind of change his mind and rejoin us, uh, completing the roster. Uh, beyond that, the person we were struggling with before that, obviously Charles Barkley is someone who we wanted to have in the game for a number of years. And the way we actually got him in the game was just a, a simple meeting with Jay, <coughs> pardon me, where we... You know, we said, Jay, we're doing this, this Dream Team feature. This is going to be great. It's an Olympic year. And we said, okay, but we don't have Pip and we don't have Barkley. <clears throat> and he was just up in arms. He was like, well, you can't, you can't do this feature without Barkley. I mean, this is ridiculous. And uh, the man has contacts. And he basically pulled out his phone and got the deal done with us and with Barkley. So uh, Jay's, Jay's, Jay's been involved in many ways that people would never guess. And that was just a little hint at uh, one of the ways in which he helped us make this game you know, as, gr as great as it is. Thank you, Eric. Next question, how does the team go about studying the movement and tendencies of older players, like the ones on the 1992 Dream Team, which is included in NBA 2K13's roster? Uh, I think the funny thing about that is that um, you know, a lot of us on the team are kind of old farts, and we've been, you know, we grew up watching these guys. So it's, I think, you know, the studying of the movement and the tendencies, we, we kind of grew up watching them. We know how we know their games, and, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's what uh, we grew up loving the game, and that's what we we know. So a lot of it's just from our own minds, but you know, a lot of it too is, you know, we're all we're all spread out all over the country. We we came from different places. We all follow different teams, and also we have a great partner in the NBA who's who's awesome at getting us um, footage and and game film and all kinds of things that we can study. And you know, it's a big part of uh, of our jobs as um, as producers and designers is just to to watch watch game tape and, and study these guys and, and get everything to be as authentic as possible in our game. Do you worry that the Dream Team will be more popular than today's players? Uh, I don't. I don't personally. I don't worry about that at all. I mean, if, if that if that quote unquote problem happens, that means we hit the uh, to use the phrase again the nail on the head as far as what people want to play in this year's game. Uh, obviously, today's NBA is wildly popular. There's a huge amount of interest in playing with the Dream Team again. So, if it became that popular, I think that's great for us and for our fans. Great. Now let's transition into some of the modes uh, in NBA 2K13. Can you give us an overview of the changes made to My Career Mode? So My Career Mode, for those who aren't up to speed on it, was formerly My Player Mode. Uh, it got a rename this year. A lot of huge upgrades to it. Uh, that would take me quite a while to discuss, so let me go over some of the higher level, basically the big vision I had for the mode this year. Um, 
and obviously the last couple of years we've added a lot of really cool features in there with you know press conferences and enhancements to the teammate grade and just all these things that make the mode more about you. We've added endorsements. We had commercials last year. Uh, this year was all about tying it together and having your actions cause more reactions both in and out of game. And one one such way you can do that this year is we have a new GM sit down feature where you can go in and meet with your team GM at any point during the season or your career. And you can tell him things like, you really don't like the job coach is doing and that he should be fired, or that you're demanding a trade, or that you're not getting enough touches on offense, or that you want him to trade the starter at your position because you know, you're having trouble breaking into the starting lineup. And the really cool aspect of this is the GM will respond to you based on your stature, within, not, which is not just within the team, but within the league. So if you're a rookie and you're coming in there making all these demands, he's going to kind of scoff at you, uh, think you're a bit of a prima donna, but if you're going in there with a you know a Kobe Bryant, LeBron James level of play, he's going to be really serious about what you're saying. He's going to take those things to heart. And if he likes you enough, because you can kind of raise up your, your likability with the GM, uh, then he'll start acting on those things. Uh, and there's over 50 different conversations you can have, different topics, I should say. The conversations branch in many different paths. Um, and it's really, it's really interesting because at the end of the day, it's a way for you to kind of pull the strings on your career uh, in a full, you know, environment situation where you're interacting in a back and forth conversation rather than just selecting things in a menu. So I thought that was really cool. Um, other examples of ways we've improved the mode is we spent, and Mike can probably speak to this later, we spent a considerable amount of time on the AI within the mode. Um, obviously we've done a tremendous job, in my opinion, of just gameplay in the last few years. I do think in my player mode in years past, the AI was it, it was a little problematic. I mean, the AI plays exceptionally well when you're playing in a quick game where you, you're always the ball handler. But when you're playing off-ball in my career, I think it really exposed some areas that we needed to do a lot of work in. And the gameplay team definitely recognized that. They definitely spent a lot of time uh, just improving on that. And one other couple areas I want to touch is just in commentary. I, I identified commentary as, as, a, as a need for this mode after last year's game. Took it home, played it. It's really one of those hindsight is 2020 situations. Um, and, and, and the mode is all about me, right? So I, I just I didn't feel like I was getting enough commentary about me. So you're going to hear the commentators assessing my career. So if I'm in a press conference and I say something outlandish in the following game, you're going to see the whole three-man booth going back and forth about what I said and how my teammates reacted and how it's shaping my career. And it's just a, it's a feedback loop of everything that you do. You're going to get feedback, whether it be in commentary, uh, whether it's in our new social media feature on the front end which is a place where fans and celebrities and players and legends all just kind of tweet at you and give you, give you these messages uh, to kind of give you, you know, a feedback of how you're doing in your career. So, I mean, the changes to my career are huge. I could go on forever, but I'm sure there's more questions on this, so I don't want to give it all away. But yeah, my career is a big change this year, and I hope the fans love it. And plenty more questions there are. Uh, moving on to the next one. The developer insight from my career says the AI has been improved. Along those same lines, has the grading been tweaked at all as last season the game would frequently penalize you for things that really weren't on you, such as getting docked for transition baskets when you haven't crossed midcourt? Yeah, that's, that's clearly referencing the teammate grade logic. Uh, and that's something that was, you know, an, another year in the belt just makes it that much more solid. Um, and that's a very serious portion of the mode for us because that's obviously all you're doing when you're on the court is you're getting assessed. And if you're getting assessed improperly, that doesn't reflect well on you know, the overall quality of the mode. So we did spend, again, a considerable amount of time working on a lot of those edge cases, uh, you know, like the one you know, shown here about transition baskets when you haven't crossed midcourt. Um, more than any other year, QA really struggled to find bugs in the teammate grade logic. Um, and that's partially because we did spend the first three or four months of the cycle with an engineer just kind of going off these one-off cases that, while they happened somewhat rarely, when they did happen, they were you know, rage controller throwing inducing, and I totally get that. And that's why we invested the time to improve it. So I do think people will enjoy the enhancements there this year. Will we see a more seamless experience like last year, complete with commercials for upcoming games based on your career path? Yeah, presentation, clearly a strong suit for the NBA 2K franchise. Um, I actually really wrangled them into my career mode this year as far as making, you know, the magic they do fit within the scope of my mode. So you are going to see things like, you know, better teasers on upcoming games and highlighting you as a player. And whenever you get a billboard or commercial, you're going to see, 
you know, interstitial commercials between quarters in the games highlighting the work that you were a part of, and just really all bringing it back to you, but while still giving you that true broadcast presentation. So, presentation just within the scope of my player, my road, huge upgrade this year. And we touched on this last question a little bit, but um, Mike, you chime in here if there's anything else that you could add. Uh, the question is, the My Player mode has been expanded with more cutscenes, billboards, and menu-like features. But how has the on-court experience been changed, including teammate AI and player performance grades? I think um, Eric kind of hit on it earlier, but if I were to sum it all up, I think the main thing is that the AI is now just really more aware of you and what you like to do. Um, we worked on our VIP system a lot this year, and that's just a system that records the way the user plays the game, um, you know, kind of where he likes to take shots, where he likes to go, how he likes to attack the basket, those kinds of things. And we worked that into the AI so that your teammates will actually run plays to get you into those spots where you like to score. And on the other end of the floor, the defense will actually, um, you know, they know your tendencies, so they're going to try and try and play you for those tendencies and try to steer you the opposite way and, and get you to do something you don't want to do. So it's just uh, it's a lot smarter on both ends of the floor. Um, other things people talked about and complained about was, um, like you said, a screen, uh, either for the ball handler or off ball. Sometimes they wouldn't use it. Um, they do a lot better job using the screens now. Um, and things like just your teammate AI in general, where if you pass to an open guy, he's going to take that shot now. So last year, sometimes you'd pass to a guy and he'd, he would just kind of dork around with the ball or he'd pass it to someone else who, who wasn't open or something like that. And, and those are the kinds of things that we tried to clean up and, and make it feel like, you know, you're playing with guys who are smart, who are going to who are going to work with you and, and work with you to succeed. Um, and one other thing you talked about, um, uh, the teammate, the, the player performance stuff. Uh, there's a new feature called uh, Coach Approval, which I think is pretty cool. And that's just, um, what it is is if, you, you know, if you're doing dumb stuff on the court, like you're, you're chucking up full, sh full court shots all the time, or you're just taking a lot of bad shots, the coach will actually bench you now, uh, and, you'll, and you'll lose minutes. Uh, or if you are on the other side, if you're doing a good job and you're taking good shots and you're you know, you're doing a good job for your team, then it'll actually give you more minutes. So it's a, it's a nice little reward system for the user as well. Next question asks, what changes will be in association mode? Uh, association mode is, is another feature that hasn't gotten a lot of talk this year, whether it be from us or from the media yet. Um, but we definitely did a lot of improvements in the mode this year. I think the first and foremost thing worth mentioning is we are CBA compliant with the new CBA that the NBA and the Players Union signed after the lockout last year. Um, that in itself uh, was a huge undertaking because there were a ton of rule changes, and if you don't have the rules right in a franchise mode, you really have nothing. Um, so we did spend a lot of time making sure that that is correct uh, for all the years moving forward within the mode. Um, beyond that, we have another feature that's called Start Today, and this is a cool little feature where at any point during the NBA season, you can say, I want to start my franchise with today's real life date, and it'll basically fill up the season up to that point with all of the real stats and standings and injuries. So you can basically, you know, get the game on Christmas Day, start on December 25th, and play out the rest of the season from that point with everything real from the NBA, which is a, a pretty cool little feature. Um, another thing we added is something called Total Sim Control. And this is one of those features where I look back at last year's game and, and years past and, and feel like those games were naked in this regard. Um, this feature allows you to go in and set up how your team plays when you choose to simulate games. And what I mean by that is you can choose who you want your three top offensive options to be. Uh, you can choose what type of defense your team plays, whether you're a, you know, a Mike D'Antoni offense or more of a slow-paced a slow half-court offense. And it, it really allows you to utilize the team that you custom built you know, in our simulator where, as in years past, and this gets back to my, my naked comment, is that you would just simulate the game and, you know, whatever you got, you got, and that didn't necessarily take advantage of the team you had built. So for people who are, you know, the true stem heads, they're really, really going to like what we've done there in this regard. 